throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. The British Isles are filled with rich history, culture, and more than a few creatures of legend. Celtic myth and legend of Ireland, Scotland, England, and Wales tell of all manner of strange creatures hiding in the forests and fields, lurking in caves and waterways, and some hiding in the attic or beneath the floorboards of residences. Some beautiful, others hideous. Some dangerous, others mischievous. This program will detail some of the most famous monsters of mythology and folklore of Scotland, Ireland, England, and Wales. Our first monster comes from Irish folklore, a creature known as the Darug Dua, the Red Bloodsucker. The Darug Dua resembles a beautiful young woman who seduces men before killing them and draining them of their blood, not unlike the common vampire or a succubus. According to the legend, a woman of Waterford, known throughout the countryside for her beauty, fell in love with a local peasant, but her father would not allow them to wed. Her father instead arranged for her to marry a wealthy man who abused her in every way imaginable. In time, her grief became too much, and she killed herself. She was buried near Strongbow's tree in Waterford, her abusive husband having already found someone new. But one night, she rose from her grave to seek revenge on her father and husband, sucking their blood until they both dropped dead. The Darugdua is a frightening figure whose legend reminds us all that the evil one creates will ultimately destroy them. Scottish folklore tells of the Kelpie, a malevolent water spirit believed to inhabit every lake and stream, and a death omen if seen. According to the lore, Kelpies usually appear in the shape of a beautiful horse but may also assume the form of a hirsute man or a beautiful young woman. The standard form taken by a Kelpie is equine. A clue to its true identity would be its mane and tail, perpetually wet even on the driest of days. As horses, they appear on lake shores and river banks, grazing peacefully and luring travelers to mount them. Once the rider has mounted, they are mystically attached to the Kelpie, who will then plunge into the water and drown the helpless victim. Once their victim has lost their life, the Kelpie tears them apart and eats them, aside from the liver. When in the form of a horse, a Kelpie sometimes has a magical bridle. Should a person gain hold of the bridle, they gain control of the Kelpie. Kelpies, though, are not horses. They are mystical spirits capable of performing many magical functions, but should anyone force a Kelpie to do something against its will, they risk being cursed and meeting nothing but misfortune in the future, which may include ending up as the demon's meal. Similar to the Kelpie, is its Irish and Welsh cousin, the Puka. Like the Kelpie, the Puka is a shapeshifter that often takes the form of a sleek black horse with a flowing mane and yellow eyes. But where the Kelpie is a predatory beast, the Puka is a trickster creature, if a reckless one at that. Active after sunset, it will call to those who it means to torment namely drunken fools, and invite them to sit upon its back. 
the person then becomes stuck to the beast, who then takes their unwary rider on a wild ride throughout the countryside, storming through fences and hedges, making death-defying leaps. Sometimes, the puka will even drop their rider into water or into a mud pit. But in the end, the rider will be shaken, yet very much alive. The puka loves to terrify people, but also loves to engage in conversation with them. The puka may even divulge wise words and advice to its conversation partner. But with any mystical creature, one must always be wary, namely, when the creature is a trickster by nature. Hailing from Arthurian legend is perhaps one of the strangest creatures ever imagined, the Questing Beast. Also called the Beast Gladysson, the creature has the head and neck of a serpent, the body of a leopard, and the haunches of a lion with the feet of a stag. Its name is derived from the great noise it emits from its stomach, akin to thirty hounds questing for their quarry. It would drink copious amounts of water each day in order to quench its quenchless thirst. But whatever water source it drinks from will forever be poisonous to all others. The beast's origins, as revealed by Merlin, say it had been born of a human woman, a princess who lusted after her own brother. She slept with a demon who would promise to make the boy love her. But the demon manipulated her into accusing her brother of rape. Their father had him torn apart by dogs, but before he died, he prophesied his sister would give birth to an abomination that would make the same sounds as the pack of dogs that killed him. The family's descendant, King Pelinor, and all his king had made it their family quest to hunt and slay the beast. But no matter who hunted it, or how talented a hunter they were, no one was able to capture or kill the questing beast. Perhaps the most famous spirit of Celtic legend is the Banshee. The Banshee is a female omen of death from folklore of Ireland and Scotland. More often heard rather than seen, the Banshee is described as a non-corporeal being resembling a human woman adorned in grey robes. Sometimes she is a beautiful young maiden, sometimes a middle-aged matron, and other times as a fragile old woman with flowing white hair. She attaches herself to a family and manifests to herald an approaching death in the family. The Banshee's warning comes in the form of a haunting cry, whether it be a low wailing to signify a peaceful passing, or an ear-splitting scream to signal a painful death. These ghostly screams are almost always heard at night and are said to sound like a blend between a woman's scream and the cry of an owl. It is said that if a person hears the wail of a banshee, then someone close to them, or perhaps they themselves, will soon meet their end. There are old tales of soldiers abandoning their posts after hearing wailing in the woods prior to engaging their enemies in combat. Terrified by the thought of the Banshee signaling their impending death, they would flee. Deserters would usually be killed by their enemies, their own armies for desertion, or simply by the elements if they stayed in hiding. And with every death, the legend of the Banshee would grow and grow. From counties all along the English-Scottish borders comes the tale of the Red Cap. Also called the Powry or Dunter, Red Caps are small and volatile, goblin-like creatures with long, prominent teeth, skinny fingers armed with talons like eagles, large eyes of a fiery red color, hair streaming down to the shoulders, iron boots 
a pike staff in his left hand, and a red cap on his head. They are said to inhabit ruined castles and old battlefields found along the border between England and Scotland, where they murder travelers who stray into their homes and dye their hats in the victim's blood. It is from this gruesome act which they gain their name Redcap. Redcaps must kill regularly, for if the blood staining their hats dries out, they will perish. They are very fast in spite of the heavy iron pikes that they wield and the iron-shod boots they wear. Outrunning or outmuscling a redcap is next to impossible, but like vampires, redcaps can be repelled by the sign of the cross and holy relics. To recite biblical scripture in their presence causes them to vanish in a flash of fire, leaving behind only a tooth. Among the most chilling of Celtic creatures is a dark fairy called the Dulahan. Also called the Gankian, Faldaroja, or Durahan, and theorized to be the demonic embodiment of the Celtic god Cromdu, the Dulahan rides on Irish festival nights with a tattered dark cloak and a powerful black stallion. In one hand, he carries a human spine for a whip and in the other, he carries his grim, grinning head. He will lift his head up high so he may see for miles and miles. When he stops, he will call out a person's name, drawing out their soul. Once the person's name is called, they are doomed to be spirited away to the other world by this frightful specter. Anyone who witnesses the Dulahan may have blood flung in their eyes to blind them, or may simply die of fright. No man-made barrier is capable of stopping the Dullahan's charge, though in some legend the Dullahan can be held at bay when a gold object is thrown in his path. Another horseman demon hailing from Celtic legend is the Nukalavi. The Nukala V is a sea demon in the shape of a skinless man bound to the body of a skinless horse. Muscle and bone and sour black blood coursing through its veins are clearly visible. Its head was large, perhaps three feet around with a gaping smile, and long gangly arms that could drag along the ground with clawed hands attached. While many beasts and demons of mythology have a dualistic or animal-like nature, the Nukala V was a being of pure evil. The monster would emerge from the sea and ride down unwary travelers all along the coast, grasp them by the scalp, and drag them into the sea to their doom. Even the Nukala V's breath caused misfortune, spreading disease all along the wind and destroying crops across the Orkneys. In some stories, the Nukala V was even capable of controlling the weather to a degree, causing season-long droughts. Though the Nukala V was powerful and terrifying, it was not without weaknesses. During the months of the summer, the Nukala V was said to be restrained beneath the waves by a deity called the Mither of the Sea. The monster would also refuse to emerge from the sea when it rained. As a creature of salt water, it detested fresh water. In fact, crossing a river or stream was more than enough to halt the charge of the Nukala V. Spectral black dogs are abundant in English legend, but few are as feared as the Barguest, a nocturnal monster that preys on lone travelers. Originating from Yorkshire in northern England, the Barguest is a spirit that takes the shape of a black hound the size of a small bear, with large teeth and claws and eyes burning red. It has been said that the Barguest 
has the ability to change its shape, appearing as a headless man or woman, sometimes even taking the form of a rabbit, a cat, or other animal. Some stories go on to say the beast can vanish and reappear at will, adding to its otherworldly way. Like all ghostly black dogs, the bar guest was said to be an omen of death. When a person saw the bar guest in its canine form, it was believed that the person who saw it would die shortly thereafter. The bar guest was so associated with death that it was said to appear at the funerals of a noble person. Whereas most spirits and monsters are confined to one habitat or location, the bar guest was said to roam both urban and rural areas with stories of its attacks taking place among the moors and in the dark alleys of cities. Last, and certainly not least, is a creature said to lurk in one of Scotland's many inland lochs, the Loch Ness Monster. Though descriptions on its appearance may vary, the Loch Ness Monster, affectionately called Nessie, is often depicted in art as resembling a plesiosaur, with a long serpentine neck, a horse-like head, four flippers for traversing the water, and a powerful rudder of a tail. The earliest written reference linking such creatures to Loch Ness is in the biography of Saint Columba, the man credited with introducing Christianity to Scotland. In the year 565 CE, Columba had stopped along the shore of Loch Ness when he saw a large beast about to attack a man swimming in the lake. Columba raised his hand, invoking the name of God and commanded the creature to go back with all speed. The beast complied and the swimmer was saved. For the next 1500 years, countless alleged sightings of the creature have been recorded and more than a few false images and elaborate hoaxes have been created to garner fame and fortune. The hunt for the Loch Ness Monster continues to this very day, with monster hunters ever eager to prove once and for all that it may be real. Celtic mythology and folklore are home to some of the most frightening and bizarre creatures ever conceived. From the Crying Banshee of Ireland, to the evil Nucula V of the Orkneys, from the grim Barghest of England, to the Kelpie of Scotland, and the mischievous Puka of Wales. Monsters of Celtic mythology have terrified and intrigued people for centuries, reminding them to be wary when wandering about the countryside, particularly after dark, and particularly around inland and coastal waters. You never know just what may be lurking right behind you.